So let's get right to it because tonight um, uh, I want to welcome you all. We're going to do a, a PPD webinar and uh, tonight's webinar is going to be um, something I, I, I don't want to say this is going to be super in-depth, but it's something that we definitely don't um, uh, talk about or review a whole lot of. It's not something that many people uh, really know about. I, I don't want to say that they don't know, but uh, XSlice has a functionality that allows you to take and export an effect as a uh, as a video effect, and you're able to utilize that in, let's say, other media. Uh, let's say you're a content creator and you are doing uh, content creation and you want to use the pinwheel effect uh, inside, I don't know, um, not that you couldn't do a pinwheel in like Adobe After Effects, but if you needed to use some sort of something in, maybe you're doing a video editing and you want to do like a little effect up in the top right corner where you're, you're doing something with the uh, you're showing off the pinwheel or something. There, there's, there's, there's the 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 option or the ability to export um, uh, effects from XLights as a video file. So what I'm going to do, uh, and there's a number of uh, of options here that are uh, functions and options that are available. I'm just going to go ahead and create a basic animation. We'll do a quick start and. From here, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to change our view to where uh, whenever I'm doing a demo and I'm showing people things, I like to go and work off of the matrix panel or I like to go uh, work off of the uh, mega tree. And between those two props, those are where I usually will utilize this functionality because to me, uh, that functionality of having uh, the tree or the matrix uh, doing a, a specific uh, effect of some sort uh, is is helpful if I have those matrix uh, or trees available. So I'll go here. N new master uh, is where I usually start because that's what I've set up here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my mega tree preview, and this has my mega tree and it has my matrix panels on. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is let's uh, go to uh, the matrix panel, and I'm going to insert a couple layers, multiple layers. Let's say five, four layers. We'll make it five total. And so what are we talking about when we're talking about exporting a, uh, an effect as a uh, individual, um, as an individual, let's say, uh, an a, a individual effect as a video? So let me just basically put down a pinwheel. So this is the pinwheel effect. Nothing fancy here. We can do uh, all three colors of the rainbow. We can go a little thicker. And we can go, let's say, um, uh, 3D inverted. That, that looks pretty good. Um, we'll do a little bit of layer blending here because this might be something interesting for you as well. And instead of doing 3D inverted, let's do a sweep. We will put light in there and let all three be kind of blended. And then what we'll do is we will uh, make these a little thinner. And we can blur that a little bit. So it doesn't look so harsh. We can do the blur on these as well. There we go. There's an interesting effect. So if you were going to utilize this effect in some other program, maybe you were going to uh, put this on an SD card and play it for your friends at your bar mitzvah. I don't know. Uh, what you could do is you can, uh, you have a couple options here. Now, first, before we start, you can only export an effect if it is on the model level. If you do this in a group, it's not going to work. So you always have to work from the model, le the, the full model level. So I'm hovering over top of the model here. If I right click, you're going to see a number of options here that say, uh, that say what we're going to work with. But the, the main one we're going to go to is model. And then over here under the model layer or the, the model level of this, of this uh, menu, we have a number of functions. We have an export function. We have a render and export function. We have an export selected model effects. And we have a render and export selected model effects. So the ones that I typically use are going to be render and export and render and export selected model effects. So 
As you can see here, I have these two pinwheels are highlighted, they're selected, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to use this render and export selected model effects. So whenever you do, you have this box, this box here opens up and uh, it becomes available to you. This is the dialogue for exporting a sequence. And this is different than what most people consider as exporting a sequence, but we're exporting uh, an effect. And we have a couple different formats. Now, you can see here that I've selected, and keep in mind, I'm on a Windows machine. I'm on a Windows, I'm running Windows 10. Windows 11 is available. It works on, it works on Windows. Uh, but some of these options may not be available if you're using a Mac. So be aware, I, I, I'm not sure the difference, but I know that there may be some that aren't as available. Um, but if we click on the drop down, you'll notice that we have a number of functions here. You can export these effects as a LOR clipboard, an LOR S5 clipboard file. You can export this as uh, a Vixen routine file. Um, I don't know what any of these things are. Like I, I've never used them. Uh, this is Light Show Pro as a Light Show Pro effect, or I don't know if that's a video or I, I don't know what that is, but it exports it as maybe the file type, we'll say. There's uh, HLS, Hinkle Light Sequencer. Uh, that's a file that you would maybe be able to copy and paste it into your sequence uh, if you use that sequencer. Um, a compressed video, and this is an MP4, and then you have an uncompressed video, which is also an MP4. Now, the difference between compressed and uncompressed would be most likely the size of the file that is created whenever the video file is built. Uncompressed is usually a much larger file, and compressed is usually a smaller file. Thus, the term compressed, it's smaller, it takes up less space. Uh, but you can also have a uncompressed, which takes up more space. Now, the difference between compressed and uncompressed typically is since the file size, one is bigger, one is smaller, usually the file that has the larger data size, usually. Now, I could be wrong. I'm not a file expert. I'm not an expert at, you know, dissecting an MP3 file. but in my experience, the smaller file, or the smaller megabyte file, is usually not as high quality as the larger files are. So I typically will go for an uncompressed video file whenever I'm doing this. Um, the MP4s weren't available until last spring. I believe that Dan wrote the new code for uh, adding in these MP4s. Uh, and I believe that the AVIs went away. Now, uh, whenever we, we were testing things out with the MP4s and we realized that uh, whenever I tested the MP4s in Windows, the MP4s as they exported didn't come out quite as crisp or clean as the AVIs. So the uh, uncompressed AVI video function, uh, which had been uh, removed in favor of the MP4s, uh, the AVI was added back in to uh, uh, allow for a little bit higher or better quality definition. Uh, now, I can't tell, I, I don't know when, I, I don't know Macintosh. Mac may be better with using MP4s and doing that. So you'll have to test in your own world to see, in your own uh, uh, use cases to see in the real world what your results are going to be. You may find that MP4s, uncompressed MP4s or compressed MP4s might be good enough for what you want to do. Um, but I found that in my case, I preferred the uncompressed AVI video. Um, the, the, and the rest of the options are mainly on network effects controller. I don't know what that is. Uh, that's probably new. Um, GIFs, you can, and, and it is pronounced GIF, as in a GIF, G-I-F-T. Uh, I don't care what anybody says. You're not going to get me to say GIF ever and mean it. Um, but as a GIF image, you can export any effect as a GIF. It's, it is helpful if you have a, let's say a picture file that a, or a picture effect, those are helpful to scale them a certain way and export it as a new image. And that way, whenever you apply it to your, um, <clears throat> to your uh, uh, matrix or whatever it is that you're using it for, it, it is that way consistently across 
uh, different things. So uh, and then you have FP, uh, you have FPP subsequence and ESEQ, uh, and then you have an FPP compressed subsequence, which is also a dot ESEQ. I mean, I've not used pretty, I've pretty much not used any of these other than the MP4s, the AVIs, and the G, uh, the GIFs. So with those three in mind, that's all I'm going to be worried about tonight. But there's a lot of functionality. If you want to, I recommend going into the uh, into the uh, uh, XLights user manual. You can learn more about those. Maybe there's more information on, on exactly what those other ones are for. Again, I'm only sharing with you what I use in my programming and the way that you would create this. So we will go with an uncompressed AVI. <clears throat> and what the next process, after you've gone through and selected which format you're going to use, XLights will remember this. So if you do a lot of AVIs or if you do a handful of them, it's always going to remember the last one that you use. So if you're exporting to the LOR, LOR clipboards, it'll remember that if you do that quite frequently. That's fine, too. So what, what you can do here is you can now click this dialog box here, and we can create, and it'll go into the your show folder. And if you were in your show folder, maybe you want to create a new folder and call this sequence images or images. And then inside your images folder, you could say, oh, this is for um, this is this is for the song Crazy for Christmas. Which is the song of the month for March 2023. And you could go in here and now you could change the name, the file name to something that will remind you of what exactly these effects are. So we could say pinwheel, whatever you want to call it, pinwheel layers. And I hit the enter button and I'm going to hit the OK button. Now you'll see that it grays out your uh, options up here. And as soon as your grayed out returns to normal, that means that the uh, video creation process is complete. So now what we'll do is we'll recall it and I'll go ahead up here and I'll grab the video effect and pull the video effect down and I uh, will go to browse. So we save that inside our images folder in our, our uh, home layout images. And, and I gave a, a specific location for this so that I could easily recall it. And I'll click on that and click open. And as you can see here, you can see that the, um, the effect has been uh, absolutely created perfectly well. There's no issue with it uh, other than it appears that it's not near as bright as the other one was. Now, is that a problem? No, not really, because XLights has a functionality that helps us uh, when we have a, uh, a video file or when we have any, any effect, we can always increase how bright the effect is by going over to our color palette scrolling down here and going to the brightness slider and you can turn that all the way up to the 400 number or whatever number works for you whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish um, but if you look at them now they look side by side they look absolutely identical so what's nice about this is if you are doing some layer blending and uh, i have a use case that we've, we've certainly i certainly use this in this month, this is February 28, 2023, and in the February sequence, uh, Glee Jingle Bells, and I'll go ahead and open that up and show you exactly what I was using that for. Uh, in the Glee Jingle Bell sequence, um, I had to do some layer blending. I was trying to hit two different notes at the very beginning of the, uh, of the song, and there's two voices, whatever it says, jingle and jingle, jingle, jingle. It was two different voices saying it. But the motion that was going on during that period of time, it was it was uh, it was slightly off. And whenever you, um, well, it was slightly off. So whenever you did open, um, whenever you did open the sequence up, or whenever you did um, uh, uh, put one effect over top of the other, the layer blending, the specific layer blending I was trying to use, didn't work very well. And so what I what I did was let me open it up now here. Let's see, Glee Jingle Bells. Oops, that's. Um, well, it's loading real quick. I have it on the moving head layout, but that doesn't matter. 
Let's go to in here. Let's see. Uh, new master. Let me just go to master. Um, where did it go? Mini trees. It was on the mini trees. Um, yeah, that's definitely not it. Let me switch this up again. Close sequence. Change. Go to the print. And that one. Here we go. Why? Yeah. I spotted it on your mega tree where you used the uh, video and the text below it to blend it yep. together. Mm -hmm. That's where I noticed it. Yep. And that's exactly where we're going. So, so you can see here, uh, I'm not going to render the sequence because it doesn't need to be rendered. But suffice to say, uh, I created a an effect here. We'll make this a little bigger so that you can all see it. And this is this is the use case that I, I, I it's not something I do all the time. Um, I prefer using native X lights effects, but there's a lot of times that I will choose to create a video effect because it renders far better uh, for the end user. It's, it's, it's a little bit less work for the computer sometimes. Uh, and usually uh, it has very little issues with, um, uh, it has very little issues uh, converting over to other uh, things, uh, any other props or something. But um, you can see here, I, I did a little bit of layer blending. And if I show you how I built this effect, I have the single strand effect. It's a basic uh, single strand going down the tree. And then I have the spirals. And if you look at the layer blending, I have a two is true unmasked. And then if you look at the spirals, the spirals are normal. And this is the word jingle. Now, um, I'm not going to play the music because what will happen is we'll get a copyright strike because that's what they like to do when you play music. Uh, but uh, it, 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 in, in this iteration, they were saying the word jingle and jingle, jingle, jingle. And then there was a double jingle. There was a, a, a long jingle and then a short jingle. And so what I did was, is I created the same effect, but I wanted, it had a different feel to it. I felt like it lifted up. So uh, I, I, I selected a green color, which was a little different. It, 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 it kind of highlighted what else was going on. It was something that stood out, was that extra high pitch jingle. And uh, I made it green and I made that into a video effect, which you can see here. There's a number of these video effects that I create. Uh, and, and again, this, this would be it here. Uh, so this is mega tree swipe. I made, I, I made it swipe. That's the green swipe you see going up the tree there. Um, but you notice I don't have a red one there. There's no red mega tree swipe. And that's be that's because I didn't need one. I was able to use the native effect below it. And I was able to use the video effect with the exported video to blend. And this is set to normal. And it's also set over here, and I'll ex expand this a little bit. Um, there we go. To show you that this transparent black has been selected. So if you create an AVI, which we, we did on the other screen, and it has a black background, then uh, it will allow any black pixel in that video to clearly show through anything that's in the background behind it. So that's what it's doing here. So we have we have the single strand effect going down the tree. Two is true unmasked. So it's unmasking the second effect or the effects below it. So the effects below it obviously is the spiral effect. Now the spiral isn't anything fancy. I'll we'll go ahead and bring this over here so you can see it. And I can break it down and show you exactly what's going on with it. Go ahead and push the play or uh, the paste button. Grab this. Let's move it over here, and I'll put another timing mark in. And there we go. So there's so there's the effect. So the effect is this, and it doesn't look quite the same 
whenever you have this on a matrix. That's why it was more interesting to do it on a mega tree than it was on a matrix because it just it had a it had a good appeal to it because thanks to the conical shape, uh, we can do that here under the uh, mega tree. Insert multiple layers below. Two works. Uh, we'll just go ahead and paste it here. There we go. So there's there's your there's your regular effect. And basically all I had done, all I had done was I, I timed that second effect to be a certain length of time and I made another version of it. I, I pasted it, we'll say I pasted it over here. <clears throat> and what I did was I made it shorter, like yay short. And then what I did was I changed the color from red to green and I did a return. And that is exactly how I created this AVI. So I basically went through the exact same process that I showed you earlier with this pinwheel. I did a right click. I did a um, uh, model render and export selected model effects. I have them both selected. You can also verify that as you are exporting your uh, your effect as a uh, video or whatever, however you're exporting it, you can verify the correct selection because Keith added this, this uh, label in the top here. It says render, then export selected effects. Um, what I found is there's so many options that sometimes I'll accidentally click the wrong one. And whenever you do click the wrong one, it's very helpful <laughs> that you can double check before you actually render that effect out and it creates the video for you. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and we'll go ahead and save this so you can see it uh, in images and crazy for Christmas. And we'll call this, uh, uh, we'll call this stripes, green stripes. Nothing fancy, just something to call it. And so you can see how, uh, now, now, why would, now why am I doing this? I guess, I guess this is another important point. Um, why don't, so, because here's, here's the question. Why don't you just take this and put these up here over top? Well, if you do this, if you have this and we just put this over top, now it messes with that bottom effect because the layer blending on this effect is set to two is true unmasked. And now you are having two props or two models or two effects that is that are unmasking and it doesn't give you the exact look that I was going for. However, if I were able to switch these out with an effect where it was all combined into one, you can see that it works perfectly fine. And that is what's useful about creating a video effect because you can take multiple multiple effects you can combine them into one effect and then you can begin blending those together as you see fit as you as you need to so uh this is definitely something that's useful in in very um i don't do this all the time but there's times that i do do it but these are very useful whenever you're trying to accomplish something and you, there's no amount of canvas mode that you can click on to and and don't please don't ask me to explain canvas mode because that's that's a whole other ball of wax that is really really complicated. Um, but it, there there are probably ways that you, I could have done this with the canvas mode. It wasn't apparent. This was way faster for me to just sit and do this because it only took a couple seconds to export the video. But this is definitely a good use case for this. Um, and there's other things that you too might be trying to accomplish. So it, it, if if you were to um, if we were to play around a little bit, let's let's say we were playing around a little bit, and um, we'll go in. We'll go back to our example down here with the pinwheels. So here we have our pinwheels, and uh, let's uh, build a let's build a little bit more of a complex effect, right? So let's put the spirals over top of this. Just uh, not very interesting for sure. Let me put this over here. Uh, actually, let me put this up here and then get rid of the house preview. Don't need that. 
Okay, so uh, let's go with a couple spirals. Let's make them thinner. And then we have, let's see, um, a little more tilt. How about a little more tilt? And if we begin playing with some layer blending, we can do, let's say, one is mask. Uh, not really. I mean, you could do interesting stuff. One is unmask. So that's a way to unmask. One is true unmask. That's an interesting. That's it. That's an interesting way to 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 kind of see the effect down below it. We could copy this and we could paste this, and we could do a flip horizontal, and we could do something I like to do, which is put this in layers. And you could have something that kind of stands out a little bit. Um, doesn't have to be white. It could be red, white, and, uh, red, green, and blue. And we could probably do some 3D with it. So there's a there's a interesting way or an interesting take on doing a, a layered effect. But what we can do now is we can select this and we can right click, model, render, and export the selected effects. Um, and you can click the uh, dialog here to, to save this in your specific folder. Um, I'm going to call this uh, test one. Nothing fancy. And as soon as it's done, it takes a little longer whenever you have a little bit more effects built into them, the more layers you have. Uh, you could have a really uh, long uh, effect that's, you know, maybe five or 10 seconds long. You're creating a video file for that. So uh, we can go up here and we can grab the video file or the video effect. Um, we can browse for the video and there's our video right there. We can bump up the brightness, show you a little bit more about the brightness there, or it shows you more because you can see more. And then, um, and then we can we can start uh, doing some other layer blendings. Uh, we could put a color wash underneath of here. Uh, let's say it's a vertical and a horizontal fade. Uh, let's say we're using um, pink and purple. There, pink and purple. And we do a circular pattern. We add some sparkles to it, um, and we have a normal blending mode. Uh, we well, let's use that. There we go. And then the, one of the things that you can do is you can begin blending these layers now because now you have different things that you can blend with it. Um, the shadow two on one, uh, which now is utilizing the colors, it's blending the colors as well. You could do, let's say, a two is two is true unmask, uh, one is reveal. That's an interesting one. Um, boy, that'd be, that'd be one for people to, to, to kind of figure out, well, how did you do that? Um, but there's different things, different functionalities that you can obviously go through and, and, and do different layer blendings with, uh, you could, uh, for example, uh, put another layer up on top here. You could layer blend with it. Um, Another interesting way to, to kind of bring different things out. Um, so it's a lot of it's a lot of playing with things. If you're being very ultra specific, you can you can build these different kinds of effects. You can do that using just like I said, I had a very specific use case. And in order for me to do the jingle, 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 that worked perfectly well for me. Um, so one of the other things that, uh, what are some of the other options that are here? Um, let's, let me show you the option with the GIF file, because I think that one's definitely helpful too. I'm going to grab, this is the uh, shapes effect. And um, if you haven't watched the video that I created uh, a little while ago, it's been, well, it's been a, maybe a year or two ago, I created a, a file or a video um, that explained more about, let's say, the, um, the functionality of under the tools menu, and we may do something like this pretty soon, um, uh, which is an update. Uh, where's it at? Generate 2D path. Um, you can create these value curves that are here. You can see value curves that are listed here. Um, and 
what you can do is you can you can create a an x y value curve that uh, gives something a path and i don't want to get into uh, uh too much into too, too much detail but let's say we wanted uh, uh the let's say we wanted a circle to follow a certain path we could fall we could create a path for it to go and what we could do is we could hit generate and I, I just double clicked a couple points there and we'll call this uh, file name. This is in our value curves folder. It's going to save it here as webinar. And I'll probably never use this one again, but it just generated two uh, 2D paths uh, value curves up here. And what we can do is we can apply them to our, um, let's see. We want to we want to do a couple things here first. Let's see. Um, let's get rid of the count here. Let's do start size at one specific size. We want it to be full lifetime, and we want it to not grow. And we don't want random shape sizes, and we don't want random locations. So this is the base level of the effect. So we got a circle, a donut, if you will. And what we can do is we can give it value curves to have it move in that path. So what I'll do is I'll click on the value curve. I will load the value curve that we just created. Um, I think we called that webinar. And we are looking at, we're, we're doing the X. We're doing the X value curve. So I'm going to select, see how it says webinar X. I'll select the X because that's the X line. And then I'll select the Y value curve go in and load the, the Y value curve, scroll down, webinar Y, click open. That would be the value curve that creates that line that I drew very quickly, and you can see it follow that path. And uh, that's a little bit about the 2D path editor. But you could do, if you, if you have an effect, especially the shapes effect, um, and, and you wanted, instead of it being a shape, you wanted it to be a video effect, you certainly could do that. Now, this will go a little faster uh, if you do something like this, we'll say. Um, but I want to get rid of the fade out because I don't want it to fade out. Let's get rid of the fade out. And let's add a color curve to it, right? Let's do some color curve to it. One, two, we'll get rid of those. And now it's going to be blue. Oh, wait, we have hold color checked. We don't want to hold color. So now you've got this weird circle bouncing around and we can make it a little longer here and what i'll do is i'll select it right click model render and export selected model effects and i will choose the save location Whoop. Uh, let me before i do let me change this to a gif when you do shapes sometimes a gif it depends if if the gif is moving slowly then a then a or if the image is moving slowly on the shapes effect you can use a gif and it scales pretty good, uh, we'll say that. And um, let's go ahead and save this as an image, or uh, yeah, image, and we put this in here, matrix shape one. And we'll save it and we'll click okay. So we've created a video effect in the past. Um, we'll go ahead and get rid of this. I'll put a timing mark down here and I'm going to bring the picture effect down. Where's the picture effect? There it is. And then we'll go browse. Hopefully it shows up. See how it says shape matrix shape one. And sometimes you may not have to bump up the brightness, but in this case, it looks like we will. And there you can see that it's basically doing exactly what the shape effect was doing. The only difference is, and this is one of the reasons why you may consider not using the conversion to a GIF, is because of this. You'll see a little bit of static right here. And what's happening is that that effect is moving, that, that piece of uh, uh, animation is moving. And Xlights has a tendency whenever you're using a GIF that's been created from Xlights, uh, from a from a, a, a an effect, it has the tendency to create um, that static or that artifacting. And if it does, then that's whenever you come back over here and say, okay, well, 
instead of a GIF, let's go ahead, oops, excuse me, uh, let's go ahead and render this selected effect as, uh, instead of a GIF, as an MP4. So let's let's do an MP4. So this is, we haven't done an MP4 yet. We'll hit another timing mark. We'll hit the video effect. And, oops, I didn't give it a name, did I? I don't think I gave it a name. I probably called it. We'll just do it again. Doesn't matter. Model, render, and export as MP4. We'll put this in the right place this time, which was images. And in our fake folder and shape 1A. Nothing fancy. Click OK. And we'll create this MP4. And then we can tell that maybe maybe the MP4 works really good with the shape effect, right? So let's go with the sh matrix shape 1A. There we go. And let's bump up the brightness and we'll see. Oh, now you see a blue screen there. We can fix that match effect to video duration. So now that's exactly how long that video effect is. And you can see it looks pretty good that way. It looks pretty good. But um, if we zoom in, you can see that there's a little twinkle on it. And I didn't put the twinkle on it. So I don't know that the uh, video effect, uh, creating it as a video was a as good an idea uh, for the MP4. What if we go in and we try making this uh, as an AVI? And this is one of the reasons why in Windows I like to use those AVIs. We'll just go back to the same thing, images, crazy for Christmas matrix uh, shape one. Oop. Shape one B is what I want to call it. There we go. And we'll change this from MP4 uncompressed to AVI uncompressed. And now that that's done, we'll go ahead and bring the video effect down. We'll go look for it. We'll go look for. Did I not save it there? Pretty sure I did. Shape one. Hmm. Let me go look at that again. Do -do -do. Model, render, and export, select effects, and images. Huh. One B. Not sure why I did that. We'll go to browse, should have one B now. There it is, matrix shape one B. And this usually does a, a rather better job for me. That's what I've learned. And if you see the blue there, you can just hit the match effect to video duration. Uh, and uh, yeah, that should work pretty good. We could zoom in on that and you can see the quality. We zoom in. And we add zoom quality to it. You can see it looks looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. So that there is uh, some of the functionality. If you were going to do multiple effects, you could you could literally select everything here. We could we could put everything all into um, uh, we could put everything all into here and select all of these here. We could. Uh, do multiple. So model, render, and export, select, and model effects. And since I have them all highlighted, we can go here to images and go into here. Matrix stuff. This is a lot of stuff that we're putting in there. And now you'll see it take maybe a little bit longer. It's exporting it as an AVI. It's a little bigger, so it might take a little longer. We can scroll over here and uh, we can put it up here on the uh, we can put it up here and uh, let's do the video effect and we can do the stuff. Where is the stuff? Matrix stuff. Open that up and bump it up. And you can see there it's kind of converted it into a mega tree, which is fine. Uh, or, or we can uh, put the off effect over top here and we can cut this out and put this where we created it and we can match the duration 
to exactly what it is that we copied. And you can see that it went through, it created a video effect from start to finish. Now I'm covering all these up so you can't see it, but it is doing exactly what, uh, what we asked it to whenever we rendered the videos out. So uh, Tom, Tom Langley, Mr. Christmas 2000, would you unmute your microphone, please? And uh, join me for a little bit of chat here. Um, th this video was brought to you because Tom messaged me uh, last week. So Tom, I, I wanna ask some specific questions. Is this uh, some of what you wanted to pick up tonight? Are you there, Tom? Uh-oh, he's watching TV. Uh, I'm trying. Did did that did that kind of hit the uh, bullet points that you were looking for? Yes, it did. Okay, make it, it, make... Expl it explained why you did some uh, things that I spotted and was wondering how you did them and uh, mm -hmm. it, the way you did it is kind of buried. The the thing is, is it's not quite apparent, and it's not something that most people are going to go out of their way to try to figure out. So. Um, and that, and that's what happens whenever I sequence, I don't sit there and write everything down that I've done, so to speak, but there, there are times that I do some things and that, that these kind of, I, I, it, 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 it begs the question, how did you do that? Or why did you do that? What was the purpose? That, and, that, that is true. But thank oh, you very much. This, this is, uh, uh, this is exactly what I was, uh, curious about. Good. Good, good, good. That was the goal, ladies and gentlemen, was to answer a question that Tom had asked me through uh, private Facebook messenger chat. And uh, um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them now. I'm going to say hello to, to Facebook. If you want to jump in and ask questions, we're going to go and move towards our uh, uh, kind of a open question format. If you have a question on the topic tonight, by all means, go ahead and unmute your microphone and uh, Join us uh, in the chat room here and hang out for the rest of the evening. We're just going to relax and kick back a little bit now for the rest of the evening. So by all means, ask questions if you have them.